Hello, I'm Kevin Bothwell here at St. Thomas's Church. It does happen that at this time of year, you can't be as happy as the world would like you to be. In fact, it happens quite a bit. Perhaps there's been a death in the family and this is your first Christmas without that particular loved one. Perhaps you lost someone long ago and holiday moments are still quite difficult for you. Perhaps you are feeling overwhelmed by the world right now. Whatever the reason is for you, it's okay. It's okay to feel that way because that's how you feel. I know that sounds silly, but it is okay. Please join Tony and I here on Monday, December the 21st at seven o'clock in the evening as we say some prayers together, light some candles and recognize that this is not always a happy time of year for people. It's called Blue Christmas and we would be thrilled if you would join us seven o'clock in the evening on YouTube if you are not presently on our email list or a YouTube subscriber in that sense, please email me at the address on your screen and we'll figure it out. God bless you. Monday, December the 21st, Blue Christmas. Good morning. Welcome to St. Thomas's online service. I am John Branderhorst, Warden Emeritus, and I welcome you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship for the fourth Sunday of Advent. My name is Kevin Bothwell. I'm the rector here at St. Thomas's. Would you join me, please? Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Listen now, for God speaks to us in the words of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a young woman engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The young woman's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But as she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be, the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have not been with a man? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that the words I will speak this morning followed by the meditation of all of our hearts will always be found acceptable and correct in your sight. Amen. On the first Sunday of Advent, if you were with us for our online service, we had a service of readings and hymns. 
And the whole point of that service was to get us to the point where we could go back to scripture from the Hebrew Bible that pointed at Jesus Christ. Now, in all intellectual honesty, I have to say that people hearing this at the time, for instance, that um, Jeremiah or Isaiah were writing would not have seen that because of course Jesus wasn't born yet. But early Christians, early Jewish Christians who knew their scripture looked back and said, my goodness, look at this. All this stuff that was said is pointing at Jesus Christ. So we took a moment to pause from the lectionary and read some of those readings. Then we talked about John the Baptist. For two weeks in a row, we talked about how John had appeared at the cusp of a change in time and also appeared as the one who was coming into the world to be that announcer that God was doing something different. Now we find out that God is doing something very different. But what we hear is that this stuff is the fulfillment of prophecy. We hear that the prophecies that we heard are coming true in this moment because we too can look back at those words from so long ago. On Wednesday, we had Jesus even confirming it. John the Baptist sends his disciples to Jesus to say, are you the one? Sounds a bit like the matrix, doesn't it? Are you the one to come or should we wait for another? And Jesus says, what do you see going on around you? The blind are healed, the lame walk, the dead come back. In other words, all the things that were said about me in scripture are happening. When the world was created, God said, let there be light and there was light. That's all it took. God said, let there be light. These ancient prophecies are not quite that certain, but they point at Jesus Christ in the same kind of way. God is working here and can do what he wants. Oh, we can get trapped in trying to figure out how a pregnancy happens without both a male and a female involved. And you can have a wonderful debate about that. But does it matter? With all the scripture and all the tradition that's piled up here, pointing in the same direction, do we need to worry about some of the technical details? And quite frankly, if God could call the whole universe into being, I think God could cause or at least bring about a pregnancy. All this stuff comes together and as we start to move towards Bethlehem, we can see it ourselves. It must have been difficult though for Mary and Joseph and a number of other people in this story to figure it out in their time frame. In fact, it must have been rather scary. Is it possible when you think about it that the research that's going into COVID-19 will also help us with other medical problems that are going on in the world? Will this research lead to something down the road that will find a cure for cancer? Find a cure for all kinds of things. You see, we can't see where God is going with this. And we have to be careful not to get caught up in the small story, but to wait for the big story. And the biggest of all of them is that later on, this week, we will celebrate God actually becoming a human being. We have to wait. We have to have faith. And we have to have hope that all this happening to us has a purpose and will contribute to the common good. I know it's hard, but faith is never easy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom, from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Lord and head of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush and you gave the law on the Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. Lord Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings will keep silence before you, and all peoples will summon you and to their aid. Come, set us free and delay no more. Lord Jesus, come soon. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut. You shut and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. Lord Jesus, come soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness, come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Jesus, come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creature you fashioned from clay. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, Lord our God. Lord Jesus, come soon. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we move into the peace, I just have a couple of announcements. One is that the building will be officially closed over Christmas. Of course, we don't know whether we, uh, for sure, whether we will be able to have Christmas Day services and that will come out in an email. But aside from that, our normal construction and renovation period will be happening during the Christmas break uh, so that children are not here in the church while we're doing that. So if you need to get into the church for some reason, please, uh, call us, email us, either Aaron or myself, and we'll make sure that you can get in, but it may not be, uh, it, you may not be able to get in if you just drop in. 
The second thing is that tomorrow is the longest night of the year, the most darkness in a day that we experience because after tomorrow, the days start getting longer again. Now, admittedly, um, pretty slowly at first, but you know, by the time we get by the next few weeks, it will begin to be noticeable again. So to mark the longest night of the year, we're having a blue Christmas service. Tony and I will be here uh, tomorrow evening. You can watch on YouTube and uh, hopefully if you're feeling that, you know, the world is just a bit oppressive or you're feeling uh, full of grief still over the loss of a loved one or perhaps because of emotional or whatever other challenges you're having, this service is for you. Please join us 7 p.m. on YouTube. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. We will be using Eucharistic prayer number one this morning. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image. Female and male, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants, Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick, and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do it 
for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, so that all who eat and drink at this holy table and those who gather remotely may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, in the more modern words that Jesus taught his disciples, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Faithful God, in this sacrament we receive the promise of salvation. May we, like the Virgin Mary, be obedient to your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God at this time and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.